Welcome to another edition of Riding Shotgun with Tops. Um, in case you missed last week's, um, we've sort of changed venues. We're out here <laughs> riding around on a grass trail through our farm um, that runs between the crops. So I don't even know what you can see out the windows, but I think you can probably see some of that stuff just so you know that I didn't go careening uh, off into the countryside. But um, uh, we just found out this morning, this is this is a Tuesday morning. We just found out this morning that the Illinois South Florida football game will go on as planned Friday night, six o'clock uh, central time in Tampa, Raymond James Stadium. Obviously with the hurricane stuff going on there, um, they had to assess you know, the damage from all that and make sure all the facilities were in operating order and make sure that it made sense uh, once they ran it through their administration, you know, local police and fire and all, all that stuff. I have no idea what it would be like to have uh, to deal with what they've had to deal with. So, um, uh, but at any rate, um, uh, despite talks of possibly moving the game to Champaign, um, they're able to have it there and they have every incentive in the world to have it there. They got a nationally ranked team. They got a Friday night national TV slot on ESPN. They're anxious to show off their very very outstanding quarterback Quentin Flowers. Uh, they're playing a Big Ten team, which is good for strength of schedule. Uh, and Illinois, I, you know, I think is excited about playing down there too. They recruit in Florida a lot. Many of the high school games Friday night have already been called off because of hurricane-related uh, impacts. And so some of those kids are going to be able to be there for the game. And so uh, they will go down there and play that game. I thought though that um, on this edition of, of Riding Shotgun, I would talk a little bit about some of the things I've seen the last few days that are hard to communicate in story form maybe, um, but that were just kind of cool that I thought I'd share with you. One, you know, after they beat uh, Western Kentucky 20 to seven Saturday night, um, you know, late late game, um, went down to the, to the interview area, uh, which is down below the, the north end zone there. And we're sort of in the, sort of in the area of where the team comes out of the tunnel, if you will. And, um, uh, a lot of interest in the two freshman defensive ends, uh, Isaiah Gay and uh, Bobby Roundtree. And Isaiah Gay, um, th this kid was, he's 17 years old. And um, it was amazing. I mean, this is the first time he's been in the spotlight of a media scrum and there was a lot of people around. And st I, I saw standing in the background this gentleman with a with his phone up um, filming and uh, a, a woman who just was beaming and uh, another young guy looked older though than Isaiah standing there with his arms crossed watching closely another person and then a woman at the back of the room and they and uh, I thought man I wonder if that's his family uh, he's from North Carolina and um, so I asked him I said uh, you know fan club or family or what is this back there? And he was kind of giggling. He said, oh, that's my family. And so I went over and started talking to his dad, <laughs> Derek, and um, they left at two in the morning. They drove all night, 12 hours uh, to get there. And um, they were so excited. I said, have you been to sleep? He said, nope, but man, the adrenaline's flowing. And they were just so proud of their son, uh, not only to play well for two games in a row, to have a say in the, in the outcome, really. Um, but also the attention he was getting and the treat and the treatment he was getting because until right around signing day it looked like he didn't have any real major offers he was going to sign with Elon which is out in North Carolina a, a college with a, an enrollment of about 6,000 and uh, their phone rang and it was Lovey Smith and the dad was, was like man that was like amazing you know he was <laughs> and uh, and Lovey said hey we're really interested in him we'd like to fly you guys in uh, have you look over our facilities, our campus, uh, ask whatever questions you guys have, and and uh, if all goes well, we really want to offer him a scholarship. And the family was flabbergasted, and they flew in, and and um, and it was a great recruiting visit. And you know, he signed, and he's here. He weighs 216 pounds, and he's 17 years old, and he's having an impact in both of the college games in which he's played. Um, I just look at him and I, I kind of marvel at him. Um, he's so quick and he was a terrific basketball player. They tell me he can really play. And um, 
and and I look at him and just kind of squint and think, I wonder what he'll look like as a junior. And I asked him that, and he said, 250, 260 pounds. You know, if he as a junior is 245 pounds and stronger and has more knowledge, I mean, this kid is just doing it on a wing and a prayer and a whole lot of natural gifts. Um, it's just so much fun to watch that kid and his family the other night, which leads me to uh, yesterday I was over at Lovey's press conference and uh, one of the cool conversations I had yesterday was with Hardy Nickerson, the defensive coordinator, and I like Hardy a lot. Um, he's not always real open because he's from the Lovey Smith School, which sort of limits uh, how much they tell you. But I've learned that if you ask him a question and you get a kind of answer, you wait a little bit until several other people have asked questions, then you go back and revisit it. And the second time around, he tells you at least twice as much. And um, I just looked him in the eye and I said, just just tell me if this is if this is true, if if this if what I'm seeing is true. And I said, you know, you came here, and I'm sure you thought a lot about the football, and um, you know, let's get a build a great defense and all that stuff. But I said, and and you know, you had a son that played college football, Hardy Jr., and um, and I think you're sort of taken this season by how much fun it is to coach all these freshmen, and he's got a bunch of them playing, and to watch them kind of grow up before your eyes, and his. Hardy's eyes lit up and he smiled and he said oh yeah you know it's really this is really fun you know watch these kids and try to help them become what they want to be you know and he's pouring all of his 16 years of NFL playing experience knowledge <clears throat> into these conversations with these kids and trying to get them there as fast as possible and he said you know there's we're all you're always like one play away from a major mistake because they really don't know what they're doing uh, beyond just the instinctual stuff, and they're trying like crazy to, to, to know. But some of it you just aren't going to learn until you, you know, trial and error. And and um, and there'll be games when they get uh, swallowed up by huge, talented, 22-year-old offensive linemen. But man, he was having fun. And I really detect that even Lovey um, is is finding this part of it to be enjoyable. And I don't think that was in place last year. <clears throat> I think this year with his first full recruiting class, he's able to enjoy uh, this growth with these kids more than than he was a year ago, and he's finding that too. Part of it, as I think Lovey in year two is frankly just a little bit more invested in the program. You know, it's like you buy a house and one month in, two months in, it's kind of a pain, this is a problem, this is a problem. But now you're over a year in, and you know what, I'm invested in this house now. <laughs> I'm gonna make this house my own, and, and that's what I kind of see from him. Uh, basketball last night, really important in-home visit with Io Dosumu. There's an N in his last name, you don't pronounce it. Um, the whole staff was there. Brad Underwood, Orlando Antigua, Jamal Walker, Chin Coleman, and the Mac Fire guys, and Io's mom, and um, <clears throat> they looked like it went really well. And the one thing we're learning about Brad um, as we um, as we learn more about how he handles recruiting <clears throat> excuse me is that whether a kid is on campus or whether they are in the in the uh, uh, prospects home um, Brad likes to offer a fairly detailed presentation of this is how you're going to be used this is how I envision you in our system this is why your skills are a match for my system for what we're going to do and um, and my understanding is that last night during that presentation in the home, that each coach, all four of them, uh, chimed in with um, with contributions, their versions of this. Look, you know, here's here's what I see. You know, this is a kid whose favorite NBA players are John Wall from the Wizards and Russell Westbrook from the Thunder, and they think that he's that kind of an attacking scoring point guard and you watch what he did this summer uh, out on the AAU circuit and you can see it I mean 42 his last game in Vegas um, you know I mean he's a this is a special player who looks like to me he's grown to every bit of 6'5 now just watching him standing there in the photo they posted on Twitter with the coaches I think Brad is 6'4 and I think Chin is about 6'4 and he's taller than either of them um, and and not that far from Orlando who you know I think is close to 6'7 so um, it looked like that visit went well. Um, 
just as important as IO is. Um, I always think the mom is really important when she's there and plays a role in this, and she is obviously there and plays a role in this. Um, you know, I'm reminded of um, a Joe Paterno story, and this was back before we know what we know now, back when Joe was just a college football coaching icon, and back when Joe was coaching uh, and doing more in-home visits, I think later in his career, that was kind of gone. He was more in-house, you guys bring the people to me, they kiss the ring, and I'd give him a scholarship. Um, but at the time, you know, Joe's Italian, so everywhere he went on recruiting visits, these moms would have them in for dinner, and the mom would try to make spaghetti or lasagna, or her version of something Italian with a red sauce. And uh, when Joe came in, <clears throat> I was told during a, a visit over there one time that, um, you know, as soon as he opened the door, he could smell whether the red sauce was on. And uh, they'd sit in the living room and they'd have the conversation, not unlike the Illinois staff had with Io last night. And um, and at some point, Joe would say, "Well, listen, um, Mama, are you making are you making uh, Italian red sauce?" And she would say, "Oh yeah, it's in the kitchen." And he'd say, "Well, let's go in and look at it and stir it up." And he would go in there with the mom, and the mom was like, "Oh my gosh, Joe Paterno's gonna check out my spaghetti sauce." And and Joe would go in there. And he would take that spoon and give it a couple swirls and he would sample it and he would say, wow, that is the best I've ever had. And he would say that to every mom and those moms would be gushing. And by the time Joe Paterno left that house that night, it didn't matter where the kid wanted to go. He was going to Penn State. Mom was sending him to Penn State. And, um, and so I'm sure Brad and all these recruiters have a way of communicating with moms. I think Lovey's really good at that. In fact, um, Isaiah Gay's dad told me that, you know, when you're a parent, you want to send your kids somewhere where you know they'll be looked after. And he said with Lovey, he said that was just, you know, no question about it. Lovey is going to take care of my kid and he's an NFL guy and he knows how to prepare him for, for pro football if that's in his future. And um, so he was thrilled and um, I think it just the whole business both Isaiah Gay and Io uh, reminds that you know yeah you're recruiting the kid no doubt about that but you're recruiting that family as well and and there's usually one person in that family that's maybe more important in the decision making I think with Io his mom is is very very important I'm not saying she would force him anywhere but I think her input will be mean a lot plus I think he just has a good relationship with Illinois. There's a lot of competition for him, don't get me wrong. Nothing is uh, set yet until he says so, but, um, you know, Kansas is involved, UConn's involved, he's going to Wake Forest, he's he, he's involved with Wake Forest and Southern Cal, and there's, there's a bunch of schools, but um, I just think that he's had a warm relationship. Brad's done a good job of establishing that in a quick amount of time, and it was terrific to see the entire coaching staff there. I mean, these kids all seem to like to be shown a little love, and when you send the full cavalry, um, that's about as much love as you can send. So, anyhow, um, that's all. Looking forward to the game Friday night. Illinois, 18 point underdogs. Is that what I saw? Wow. I, I don't know. I've looked at the tape of Quentin Flowers, and he's he's really scary. There isn't any question about that. And usually, when you play a guy like that that can pull it down and run with it, you know, you talk about discipline on the defensive line, and and. I, I don't know, is discipline harder when you have freshmen up there? I, I would think it probably is. They, they're, they've they been pinning their ears back and running after the quarterback here, but this is going to be a different deal with this guy. So we'll see. Um, I didn't think they'd beat Western Kentucky. I didn't think their defense would improve by light years from one week to the next week, and it did. And um, so that was really fun to watch the other night, and maybe we'll get a surprise uh, Friday night, 6 o'clock Central from Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. Well, listen, thanks uh, for riding along. Uh, didn't see any deer this time, saw one last time. Man, I tell you what, we'll be out here before long and there'll be a combine out here. Our beans aren't ready, but our corn's getting closer all the time. And uh, so um, have a great week and uh, enjoy the game Friday. Thanks. Bye.